Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I got something a little different for you here today. Um, some stuff that I've wanted to get off my chest for a while now. A lot of it relating to me, to you guys, and what's been going on with the channel for the past few years. The format of this, I'm going to tell you right now, is going to be through a React, which I know is just immediately going to turn a lot of you off because it's not my usual style, but um, please bear with me here. I honestly feel like this is the best way that I can express myself here. We're going to be watching a video by Rax and Terex, who is an RPG channel here on YouTube. He covers games like PoE, Last Epoch, Diablo 4, and so on. And um, the context of all of this is apparently Diablo 4 is in a pretty bad spot. And he's made videos here and there sharing his frustrations with it. And he's gotten a lot of blowback, um, even being accused of being a uh, hate view farmer and thus wanting the game to fail so he can forever make hate videos, as they're being called. And in this video, he kind of describes the situation and a lot of the frustration that can come along with it. So I did actually watch this already. And I found that I really resonated with it. His situation is remarkably similar to what I went through with World of Warcraft. So I just wanted to do something a little different today and sort of use this as a surrogate to talk about my experience, how it's affected me and my channel on here, because honestly, it's been weighing pretty heavily on me for a while. So you'll excuse a little venting here, hopefully. Hi, everyone. It's Rax. Going to tackle some new waters today for the first time. Um, when you are a content creator, you kind of sign up to be on stage in the spotlight to be judged by people all the time. I know that. The other content creators know that. You know that. It's just the way that it is. So first off here, um, I definitely do want to acknowledge this because it, it is absolutely true. And uh, I don't want this video to come across as, you know, how dare you criticize me or anything sound familiar. Um, I'm very open to criticism. I actually value it because I've used it in the past to improve my channel. Perfect example here is that my videos used to not have music in them and combined with the monotone demeanor, as you know, some would say that maybe they could get a little dull sometimes. Well, one day someone in a not so constructive way told me that I should KMS for not having background music with such a monotone voice. Yeah, not even joking. So, you know, the first thing I did was ban this person, of course, but I mentioned in the last video, the Diablo one, that um, one of the most important skills that you can have in any creative work is to be able to extract useful change, even out of unconstructive criticism. This comes from personal experience. Um, from this comment, I actually did start putting music in my videos, and today, a lot of people even say that it's one of the best aspects of my videos, is the music and uh, how I use it and how it's composed and everything. So I just want to make sure that in this video, I don't come off as just completely resistant to what very well may be good-natured and honest, constructive criticism. Um, I do value that highly, actually, and I think my track record supports that. I think I made a lot of changes to this channel based solely off of feedback from you guys. Today I'm going to break a golden rule that you're supposed to follow, and that's when there are a bunch of people talking negatively about you. What you're supposed to do is you're not supposed to engage with it. You're not supposed to quote unquote, feed the trolls. But I think in this example, I think some people genuinely believe something that I do not agree with. So I wanted to make a video and have a calm and civil discussion about it. And as you might have been able to tell from the title of the video, there is a Reddit thread called, after watching a couple streams and videos, I've come to the conclusion most content creators do not want the game, do not want games to succeed. And this is dealing with Diablo 4, right? And then I'll also say right now that I don't really know what's going on specifically with Diablo 4 other than it's struggling. I know some of the general stuff, uh, 
my experience with Diablo 4 was that I didn't buy it at launch because my confidence in Blizzard at this point was extremely low, but all of my friends did, and it was popping off at launch. Everybody seemed to love it. It was the best game ever, and oh my god, you need to buy it because we're going to play it infinitely forever and ever. And I thought to myself, well, maybe this is just the veneer of a fresh launch. It sounds pretty good, but I'll give it a bit of time before I pull the trigger. And finally, I eventually decide it's worth the money. I cave into my friends who are telling me it's the best video game ever. And I kid you not, like one or two days after buying it, they release this patch where they nerf everything. And all of a sudden, everybody hates it. And my entire friends group stops playing. So, yeah, that's my experience with Diablo 4. But, you know, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about more about channels, not being happy with their games they're covering. So let's, yeah, let's just continue. But I, yeah, I felt the need to complain about that. And what follows here is many, many comments about a lot of the major, uh, whatever you want to call it, a lot of the Diablo 4 content creators, either current or past creators, and people giving their opinions about whether or not that's true and whether or not they like these content creators, and some of them were personal attacks here or there, and that's totally fine. But I would like to have a conversation about this idea that we want games to fail and uh, see, see where we can get through that and you know, present my side of the story if you care to listen. So I have this lovely painting here, and I want to talk about a couple of different ways that we could think about games, okay? We can, let's start with thinking about it quantitatively. And I think this is the uh, quantitatively, oh God, I probably spelled it wrong, whatever. There's a lot of letters there, quantitatively. So this is probably one of the main reasons why people would think that we want these games to fail. And I think the main, the main thing here is to farm the hate views, right? I think that's uh, one of the main reasons why people think that we would enjoy the game to just go crashing down. Because then what we can do is we can post a million videos and do reactions, or this or that. And uh, it's, it's known in the world that drama sells, right? So... What he's saying here is absolutely correct. I mean, you've heard the old saying, it's like watching a train wreck. I'm not sure what it is, but there's just something with human nature that a lot of people are drawn to the bad or to the, the controversial. It's why news stations run these awful stories 24 seven. So, you know, of course, within the world of social media, there's this element of negative content being more entertaining and thus garnering far way, way more viewership than positive content. Uh, for instance, here, if I were to make two videos, the top 10 best things with World of Warcraft and another one labeled the top 10 worst things with World of Warcraft, I'd be willing to bet money that the latter would have far more viewership than the former because that's just what people are drawn to, it seems. So, you know, of course, um, because of this, there are channels out there who do chase that. They may not even necessarily believe in what they're saying in the actual videos. They're just saying what is going to appeal the most to the person who would click on a video labeled top 10 worst things with World of Warcraft, for instance. And as a result, um, nuance, patience, fairness are usually cast aside to feed into what people want to see and hear. These channels absolutely do exist, but the problem is on the other side where, you know, you, you have people who are very quick to put channels into these boxes the moment they hear anything that isn't like glowingly positive about their favorite game. And, you know, this is of course done to discredit minimize, delegitimize what very well may be honest discourse of, you know, hey, this, this is bad for these reasons. What happens is that they don't actually have an argument to counter what is said in the video. So 
they just, in a very disingenuous way, they label that channel and that video as hate view farming, and then they move on because, well, it's much easier to do that. Like a news outlet, for example, you very rarely turn on the TV at night and hear, oh, a, a puppy had a great day today. It had a nice little steak, went on a walk, played ball, and then he took a nap. No, it's this and the murder suspect killed 10 people, this or that or this or that, right? So the drama sells. So I'm going to talk about myself here. I'm not going to bring the other content creators that are involved in the thread into this. They can address this if they would want to. But the interesting thing for me here is the style of content creator that I am. I played Diablo 3. I've been making content for five years. For four of it, I played Diablo 3. And I made almost 1,000 videos on the different seasons about build guides, tier lists, leveling guides. Occasionally, I'd post like an achievement that I did. Maybe I got a rank one or something. But most of my content is guides. And I, have, I can count the number of reaction videos I've ever posted on my YouTube in, on one hand. I think it's actually less than five videos ever. So these hate views... If you think about it quantitatively from a financial perspective, if that's the way that you're thinking about it, do you think I make more when everybody hates the game and nobody's really watching all the guides versus, you know, the couple of drama videos that I can excavate out of the situation? It's, uh, it's really not there. And another thing about it is if we want all the games to fail... I mostly stay in the ARPG scene, and this is kind of the year of the ARPGs, right? So uh, here, I guess I could get away with it much more than in other years. But if you think about it, if Diablo 4 and PoE and Titan Quest and Last Epoch and Grim Dawn, if all of those are doing well, doesn't that just financially make my life a lot easier? because hopefully they'll be launching cool things on different dates, can just make more awesome videos. And again, we're thinking about it quantitatively. So when we, when we have a lot more choices, a lot more games to jump between, you can just get a lot more money. And if, if you haven't picked up on it yet, this is just one of the things that I want to talk about. It's really not about the money for me. That's not really it. But that's one way that we could think about it is quantitatively. So now let's look at it qualitatively. So I want to be clear here, 99% of you guys are just here to have fun and to watch cool videos. I'm probably, honestly, I'm probably making the same mistake as Rax here by even making this, but like I said, it, it has been on my chest for a while and I just feel like I'm at the point to where I want to talk about it, but you know, don't take this as me talking to all of you. It really is a very small contingent of hate watchers who hate my videos, but yet they still watch every single video I put out just to shit on me. But yeah, again, it's a very small percentage, probably not even 1%. 99% of you guys are, are really great and supportive to me, and I, I appreciate that. But what Rax just said here is one of the reasons why I said I related to this video so much. You know, I started this channel in 2014, and I started making WoW videos in around mid-2015. And um, I started it because I got bored of Draenor, but I was still relatively happy because I was pretty much just farming gold and leveling characters. And you know, I just made guides related to what I was doing in the game at the time. And then, you know, of course, the Legion expansion came out. And for me, everything is great. And I'm more happy season show than mad season show. And then Classic gets announced. So I'm like over the moon as far as World of Warcraft is concerned. So naturally, as you would expect, um, the videos are generally pretty positive. I talk about all of the cool things that I like. I'm making guides because I actually like the game and I'm really motivated to keep playing. But as many of you know, Blizzard's reputation these days isn't the best. I don't know, I guess that's what happens when you continuously underperform, release unfinished games, lie to, and even straight up scam your community sometimes. So naturally, because I'm of course very unhappy with this, the videos start to become more critical 
in nature. Um, some would even say more negative in nature. And I'm going to tell you right now, and he'll get into it himself in a moment. It's unsustainable. It's unsustainable in multiple ways, not just quantitatively, i.e. money earned. And we're actually going to get into some numbers here. I don't want to get caught up too much in money or views. That's not what it's about for me, but this is where the basis of the hate view argument lies. So we're going to enter this realm based on this argument, and we're going to talk about money and performance a lot here, just to warn you. But the time I was making the most amount of money on my channel was this period when I was happy season show, when the game was doing well, the viewership that the channel pulled in was record breaking for me. And this is because of two reasons. One, at this point, I was more of a classic focus channel and you know, obviously classic was really ramping up here and there were an absolute ton of people searching up videos on YouTube um, because of that. And two, because I was happy on an individual level and, you know, I was much more motivated to make videos, content creation, streaming, editing, whatever. They're similar to your conventional job in the sense that if you don't like it, it becomes harder. And for me, the fit, my favorite videos that I like to make are the ones that celebrate the cool things about the game. What I love about it, I'm not completely against the opposite end. I do think that sometimes it can be entertaining to watch a train wreck, but generally speaking, World of Warcraft here, the this is bad because of this, this is wrong because of this, that whole thing got really, really tiring for me. And, you know, even when I made those videos, I tried to do it from a place of analysis of, you know, what's going wrong here to hopefully draw some sort of constructiveness out of it. Um, I think many longtime watchers will back me up on that one. So, you know, just trying to put yourself in my position here, as Blizzard was continuously stabbing their player base in the back, I would have two choices. A, ignore it and basically just be really dishonest with not only myself, but also you guys, the viewers. Hold all of that frustration in and just pretend that everything is sunshine and roses when you know you're they're doing things that you feel are obviously bad for their products and by extension bad for your channel that covers their products exclusively pretty much or you have option two b speak up and say you know hey this is wrong this is bad because of this this isn't fun and for me looking at all of the data here you can see happy season show angry season show this drop off exists because a people aren't touching blizzard games with a 10 foot pole now and are therefore not looking up videos about the game and B because on a personal level, I'm unhappy with it, primarily classic. And I'm not nearly as motivated as I used to be. Um, it actually got to a point to where I would like dread editing a video complaining about whatever stupid thing they had done that week. My production goes down because of this. I stop releasing as many videos as I used to. Um, I mean, I quit making videos about it for two years because I was that unhappy. So, you know, if I was this hate view farmer, which a lot of people were labeling me at the time, this is where logically, based on their own logic, I would have increased production. The more Blizzard screws up, the more content there is. Um, it didn't happen because, again, I wanted the game to do well. It was in my best interests, not just quantitatively, but qualitatively. So this argumentation of chasing hate views. Yeah, of course there are channels out there, but uh, one of the really frustrating things for me was that I was starting to get labeled as one of these channels because my videos were becoming more critical and negative. So, you know, people started to chalk me up as, oh, you know, he doesn't actually care about the game or any of this. He's just, he's just farming views. And I'll tell you something. There is not a single person 
on this planet that makes a one hour video complaining about a level boost and how it will lead to a wow token if they don't care about the game. Oh, and by the way, I was right and I told you so. Anyways, let's continue. Okay, qualitate. Why did I why did I sign up to I'm not going to finish it, you know, qualitatively. So, one thing to understand is me sitting here as a content creator in a chair with a microphone, mouse and keyboard playing the game. I'm I'm just like you. I'm I'm just a person. And just like you with whatever job or occupation that you might have, if you don't like your job, then it sucks every day waking up and going to it. It's the same idea here. And one of the pieces of that is if you wake up every day and you have to, you feel like you have to stream a game that you don't like, then your job just sucks and you don't enjoy it. Exactly. Um, like I said, it, something that I used to love started to become miserable for me. And it's a large reason why, you know, I ended up quitting for two years. So you might think, well, then just don't stream the game that you don't like. But you know, as well as I know, most content creators are kind of bound to a certain game or a certain category because usually the moment that any content creator goes variety, it's the death of their channel. This is 100% true. Now, I love my channel. I'm very happy and grateful to be where I am and that, you know, you guys give me your valuable time so often. But if I could change anything, it would be that I would have sprinkled in more videos here and there, non wow videos, that is. So I wouldn't have developed myself into such a niche. Now, personally, I don't think I have it as bad as some other channels out there. I'm actually very happy with how my non-World of Warcraft videos do. I mean, I made videos to an audience of under 100 people for years. Uh, I make them because I like making them. It's a very rewarding creative outlet for me, but I pretty much became a WoW channel because I, of course, uploaded primarily WoW videos, so understandably so. That's what most people want and expect from me, which can be great if I was great, but obviously, as you understand now, if I was bad, it's, it's like that old saying, you know, putting all of your eggs in one basket. Since then, I've made more efforts to kind of explore stuff outside of World of Warcraft. And uh, overall, I think I've been pretty successful, all things considered. And, you know, thank you for that. I'm going to continue to do this because one, I think I'll just like it more. And two, I think it'll also make my relationship with the game more healthy. So I don't once again put myself in that position to where if it starts to become bad, I'm forced into something I no longer enjoy. Right now, I'm enjoying Season of Discovery and Hardcore, but you know, who knows in the future, it could take a turn for the worse. If they, I don't know, maybe they'll release a WoW token for it or something and kill my desire to play it. So if this were to happen, if I'm more of a variety channel, I can maybe take a healthy break, relieve the burnout, and return to it later with a mindset that isn't so pessimistic. I think that's a healthy approach for any channel to have because what often happens is that when you're so reliant on one game, you lose touch with your viewers. You know, a, the channel plays the game for a living and the viewer, of course, plays it for fun whenever, ha whenever they have the time. So something may be this huge problem for the channel, like the level boost would lead to the WoW token, which removes all reason to play the game. Told you so, by the way. But for the viewer... Maybe it's not such a catastrophic thing. You know, they just quit until a different version comes out. And, you know, this is a luxury that the channel forfeits as soon as they make that leap and they make, they make a living off of one game. They lose the ability to do that. So for me here, just speaking broadly, while you will see WoW videos here and there, I still have a lot to say about it. And 
I'll always have a soft spot for it. I would like to break out of this niche that I've built for myself. Particularly, I want to get into the video game review scene. And the very next video after this will actually be one of my favorites. So keep it out for that if you want to see my take on reviews. Because it's just hard to get your audience to stick with you if they've got to really like your personality. If you can stream a different game every day of the week and you can still retain your audience, you have absolutely made it and you're in the 99 or the, you're in the 1%, which is incredible. And I do not think that I am there, nor do I want to be there. I don't like streaming a different game every single day. I would be happy to play multiple ARPGs and learn as much as I can about them. But I don't want to play a new game every day. I don't want to be a variety streamer. It's never been a goal of mine. But that's just, that's just one of the things. Consider the audience. You want to know what was even worse for me than Diablo 4 not meeting my expectations? Was every single day, even if you are okay playing Diablo 4 and you know trying to learn more about the game, I made 15 100s. I played a lot, and some of them died on the way from hardcore. I was playing on hardcore. So it was even more than 15. I made a lot. It's when your audience is negative toward the game, too. And, you know, some people are always going to be negative. People make fun of PoE all the time. People make fun of Last Epoch. But the level of negativity in the chat all day long, it wears on you. And Misery loves company. Again, one of the reasons I mentioned in my quitting video why I quit is that because, you know, Blizzard was just continuously screwing up and self-destructing. And because I was continuously making videos about it, I slowly watched my community also transform from people who loved the game to people who were about as jaded as I was. And that wasn't a good feeling. Again, my favorite videos were the ones that were celebratory in nature. You know, this is what we love about it. Um, being able to be a channel that can bring people together over a combined love of something is way more satisfying to me than being a channel that brings people together over a combined dissatisfaction of something. Negativity absolutely rubs off on others. So another reason for my quitting was being forced into these two choices. A, ignoring everything, which as we discussed, that isn't honest, and that's not me. Or B, making yourself heard, but in the process of doing so, making pretty critical or pretty negative videos and, you know, kind of turning your community into something that you don't want it to be in the process. Well, I chose the hidden option C, which was take a break and come back when I'm not feeling so jaded and burnt out. And, you know, luckily for me, you guys are very patient and understanding and you waited like two years for me. So again, I would like to express my thanks for that here. And in the thread, the one thing that a lot of people have correctly identified about me personally, um, whether they like me or whether they don't like me, is I am not an overly emotional person. Some <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this guy might be my spirit animal. Someone made a comment about me. It's like, I've seen Rax get, you know, multiple rank ones in Diablo 3 and he never cares. Like, it's rare that you even see him crack a smile. Okay, so... Th that makes me smile. That makes me laugh. But, you know, it's just, I'm not an overly emotional person. But when every, almost everyone in your chat is just saying over and over how much they don't like it, it, it starts to wear on you. It does. Uh, it does wear on you. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in owning up to your, your own actions and taking responsibility for your own behavior. But I felt like near the end of my coverage there, th things were starting to get too negative as a whole, not just the game, but the channel and the community surrounding it. And, you know, again, that's one of the reasons why I put a stop to it. Another thing is just not, not just the streaming part, just consider how much harder it is to make content. Do you know, it, I genuinely started to worry because the, uh, the, everything started to feel so negative. It was like this tornado of negativity. I honestly wondered if there would become a point where I would post just, you know, just keep making a guide and people would start saying, why the F are you still making guides on this game? 
I, I, you're actually pissing me off that you're still supporting this game. And I actually started to wonder, it's like, wow, can I make another guide without upsetting people? And so qualitatively, when everything is going bad, it sucks. It sucks for you guys. It sucks for us. And then the people, people like us, the content creators, a lot of them, I can't speak for all of them. Me personally, I'm sick of the negativity. And then a viewer sick of the negativity sees more negativity on the YouTube or on the Twitch and then concludes that this content creator is just feeding into it. So this actually happened to me. Apparently this hasn't happened to him yet, but as things started for me, when things started to get really bad, even on videos that were completely unrelated to critique of the game, like a guide, for instance, uh, some of the comments would be like, you know, why, why are you still playing this? This game sucks, et cetera, et cetera. And it can be, a, it can, it can be a pretty demotivating thing to deal with, to feel like, you know, you're the only one who's into it. Being a Blizzard content creator was kind of a struggle sometimes because there's this trickle down effect with controversy. Perfect example, when the Blitzchung thing happened, he got banned from the Hearthstone tournament and they took away all of his prize money. I happened to be streaming Classic during that time. And what happened was my chat was brigaded with hundreds of people telling me how horrible of a person I was for supporting Evil Blizzard, stop streaming, delete your videos, stop supporting China. Um, funny enough, all of these people were typing this on their keyboards that were made in China, sitting on their chairs that were made in China, and looking at their monitors, which were made in China. So, you know, if they really cared, they would gather all of the things that were made in China in their house and throw them in the trash and never buy them again. But, you know, why do that when it's much more convenient to harass strangers over the Internet? That way you don't actually have to inconvenience yourself. You can just make yourself feel superior without actually having to do anything. But I digress. But anyway, my point is it got tiring. You know, Blizzard was involved with so many controversies that there would be this trickle down effect where channels would get the secondhand hatred from, you know, these, these social media slacktivists or just jilted ex players. And, you know, just another point to consider in this notion that channels who speak negatively about a game want it to fail. I, I just feel like this is such an illogical argument, especially if said game is their main thing because they're just, they're, it's, it's the definition of shitting where you eat in my eyes, part of my French. But it wasn't that I was feeding into the hurricane of Diablo 4 bad, it's I was genuinely exhausted and couldn't continue anymore, and I was disappointed. I was feeling negative about the game at a certain point, and then I voiced that opinion. So it, it's, not, it's not a secret. It's not like, oh, I've noticed that Rax is getting negative toward Diablo 4. You're right. I was getting negative toward Diablo 4, because so I wanted it to get better. It did not meet my expectations. Um, something I'd like to say here as well with you know people who have a big problem with negative content how many negative videos do you see about from software not really a lot probably a reason for that probably because from software didn't consistently release unfinished games lied about things in their games or scammed their audience cube crawled around their offices you know, I, I don't really know the dynamic of Diablo 4 videos on release. I wasn't watching them, but judging from what all of my friends were saying, I have to imagine that things were generally positive. People seemed to love the game, and, you know, this, quote, hate campaign only started after they released this atom bomb of a patch that just nerfed everything to slow people down because they didn't actually have a compelling end game because, once again... They released their game before it was ready. Um, you know, another frustrating thing about this whole dynamic is that 
People who have a problem with this negativity, they misdirect their frustrations to these channels when their problem should have been with Blizzard. You know, if they didn't do consistently stupid shit, there wouldn't be any content for these hate channels to farm, now would there? It's the definition of shooting the messenger. And, you know, in these people's minds, even though they won't ever say it, what they really want out of these channels is to just completely ignore the dumpster fire laying behind them, lie through their teeth that everything is great and grand, and essentially be just totally dishonest with their viewers for the sake of not damaging their insecurities because they're such fanboys that they've lowered their standards so far that they're willing to defend mediocrity, which changes, guess what? Absolutely nothing. You know, this is a publicly traded AAA video game developer, which obviously and understandably operates on the principle of profit. The more players are playing, the more money they earn. So by not calling them out, they're actively hurting the developer that they think that they're defending. Um, if you don't call out the BS and mediocrity, and not only that, but you actively defend it, you know, what reason is there to change here? If you defend Shadowlands, you know what you get? More Shadowlands. You know, fanboys aren't good fans of any product, game, movies, TV shows, whatever, because they have no quality standards. It doesn't matter. They've, you know, they've planted their flags. It's sort of like politics, like, you know, people will throw themselves in front of traffic to defend, quote, their team, even if they're wrong. And they know that they're wrong because, well, it's their team, right? Anybody who ever says anything negative can possibly have good intentions or valid, excuse me, valid points. No, it, it must be that they're these heinous hate view farmers who twiddled their mustaches that the game they cover for a living is doing poorly because somehow that makes sense, I guess. And I tried to hang in there as long as I possibly could until I had finally reached a breaking point and then I tried Last Epoch and PoE. Okay, anyway, let's go to another topic. And this one is the personal topic about gaming. So I've talked about this before. One reason why someone might shit talk a game is because of tribalism. God, there's a lot of this. It's it's kind of, it never makes sense to me. It's, oh, it makes sense to me. It definitely makes sense to me. I'm not sure how intense tribalism is for ARPGs, but for MMOs, oh my God. I honestly think it's about as intense as US politics and... If you think about it, you can see why, you know, MMOs are such a time consuming genre. You put so much time into them and it's this always online persistent world where you're interacting every day with both strangers and friends in a way it's almost a second life. So it's very easy in fact, to see how and why people can become so emotionally attached to them. Like, if somebody who spent thousands of hours in the game, thousands of dollars in the game, how do you think they're going to react if somebody says that the game they've invested so much into is bad? I can definitely speak from experience here. I've said in the past what many would say are pretty innocuous critiques about the game, such as the level boost is bad and will lead to the WoW token. Told you so, by the way. And you would not believe the pure, uncondensed hatred and vitriol and personal attacks that were thrown my way in return. And here's exactly why. When people tie their identity and personality to something and you criticize that something, to them, you're not criticizing their favorite game or movie or political affiliation. You're criticizing their choice to invest so much time, money, and emotion into said thing. In their minds, it was personal the moment that you made fun of the cash shop. And, you know, at least for MMOs and probably most forms of media, this, this is why you see that tribalism. Uh, it has to do with social media's just completely polarizing nature. 
and to them they're not defending a simple video game they're they're defending their entire identity they're defending their choices to invest such an intense amount of time energy money and emotion into said video game it's all over uh, i it doesn't make sense to me because it's just not how my brain works there's so many people that like a game someone might really like last epoch and then for some reason it connects in their brain that if that's how they spend their time then people spending their time doing other things like poe or diablo 4 those are like the enemies those are the bad guys so if someone says something nice about the other game i better counter that to stick within my tribe um exactly and you know this this is rooted in my opinion and nothing other than insecurity. I mean, of course, if if you truly believe that your game is so amazing and wonderful, why is it like this challenge to your very existence that somebody critiques it? Or if they simply choose to play something else or stop playing. Um, when I quit the game, that was another source of extreme toxicity. Um, I was like a villain in these people's eyes that must be destroyed simply because I quit and you know to me that that just screams insecurity as an example here for me one of my favorite games of all time is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and you know I, I think this is an absolute masterpiece it's a very special game to me it also happens to be my favorite from software game and if somebody says nah bro Sekiro sucks Bloodborne is the best from software game because of this and this and this because I am secure in my opinion, I'm thinking to myself, you know, well, I don't agree with that. Personally, I think you're wrong, but hey, you know, it's just your opinion. It's cool that you share the same love for something, even if it's not the thing that I love. So now in insecure fanboy tribalistic cultists responds in this very vitriolic way, like what you saw in that Reddit thread, um, personal insults, loser, fake, so on and so forth. They, they take the focus off of the game and they shift it onto the person talking about the game as a defense mechanism because, you know, I think deep down they know, you know, well, maybe there's, there's some truth to what this person is saying, but, you know, they're just so emotionally invested into it that they resort to, uh, such emotional personal responses because you know some some buttons are being pushed there it's debate 101 you go after the person when you've run out of responses to the subject at hand and by the way you see this link right here in front of you hate views this this is your this is usually the go-to argumentation for the tribalistic fan you know anybody who says anything negative about my favorite game is farming hate views again taking the focus off the subject at hand and, and going after the person. Uh, this is done, in, in my opinion, in a very disingenuous way to disregard and to minimize because, you know, they're, they're so sensitive and are unwilling to see flaws with their favorite thing or side because, again, they've planted their flag. It's like the old Xbox versus Nintendo versus PlayStation console war that somehow is still raging on today, if you can actually believe that. It's crazy. Um, this is something me personally, I don't feel at all. And it's not because of a quantitative reason. It's not because, well, it's in my best interest so I can make the most money to pretend like I love every game. That way I can just milk it as much as I possibly can. It's, I just genuinely love games. I just love them. I just like to play them. I've always have since I was a kid, which is another kind of point, the nostalgia point. You know, it, I would be lying to you, and I bet you there's other, I'm certain there's other people who are going to understand this perfectly. I would be lying to you if I didn't say, I secretly kind of hope that Diablo, the Diablo franchise, would just continue to rule the ARPG world forever, because I started playing it as a little kid. It was one of my favorite things ever. So you kind of have that, like, a brand devotion kind of thing, and yeah, um, no matter what, I think that something deep inside me will always want World of Warcraft to succeed. I mean, it was and 
continues to be a pretty big part of my life. I absolutely have a lot of nostalgic value with it. I, I hope that it can bring the same fun to others as it did to me. And, you know, again, one of the reasons why I was very vocal with things um, that I thought were wrong because I felt like, you know, it made the game, it made the game lesser to skip past 40 zones of content for the sake of hitting the finish line faster. It made the game lesser that everybody's packed into an expansion that's one sixth the size. Um, it makes the game lesser to buy character progression when at the core of all MMOs lies character progression. And I also thought it made the game lesser to make botting one of classic 2019's biggest flaws multiple times worse by giving them the ability to start not from level one, but level 58. Um, I thought all of this made Burning Crusade, an expansion I played back in the day, unable to live up to its full potential. Um, which, by the way, judging by the subscriber chart, which was recently made public, maybe I was right. Maybe there wasn't this huge surge of players who don't have enough time to level, but yet for some reason are playing the most time-consuming genre of all that were used as a justification to release this paid progression, despite the fact that they said no, they wouldn't. Maybe this mysterious giant group of people never existed to begin with, and the Ballad of the Level Boost wasn't hate view farming, and it actually had reasonable points to consider. You would, you would have loved for Blizzard to be like the old Blizzard. I would love for Diablo to rise to the top and be the godliest game ever. It's not currently what's happening. But nostalgia plays a factor here. And if anything, I would be rooting for Diablo 4 more than the other games. And the other thing, again, we kind of talked about it, it's just kind of being a gamer. Again, I just like games for games. Any kind of genre of game that comes out that's amazing, like the Pal Worlds or the Hell Divers or the Deep Rock Galactics or anything that emerges as, a, as something that just breaks the mold and impresses everybody, I would love to support that in any way that I can. Yeah, you know, again here, for me, the most gratifying era was in Classic 2019 launch with you know, how many vanilla videos I had made up until that point, I really felt like I was a big part of the celebration of how great everything was. And, you know, that to me was a thousand times more gratifying than the old, you know, than, than a video like the Ballad of the Level Boost, like, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. That, uh, you know, a lot of my videos eventually turned into because I really only had bad things to say because Blizzard was really only putting out bad things. So maybe some of the people that are, that are behind this thread or thinking like this, maybe I haven't covered your particular reasons here. I tried to think of a lot of them. But when I look here and I actually think about it from a ton of different ways, I actually don't, I don't see how you guys arrive at the conclusion that I would root for any game to fail. Um, I'll answer it for him here. It's because they don't actually have a reason. Again, there are hate view farmers out there, but they're just they're just tired of the negative coverage of the game. So they label all negativity as hate view farming. Um, these people would be completely content if nobody ever spoke negatively about Diablo 4, even if that results in Diablo 4 sucking balls forever. Now, I, another point that I want to make is there is a massive, massive difference between making a comment like D4 bad and actually trying to help, I cannot tell you how many gigantic multiple page outlines and feedback documents I have given to Blizzard over multiple different games trying to help. Do you remember um, when I made the, when the Abattoir of Zir came out and I made that video and I said, the Abattoir of Zir is just absolutely not what we want as the end game content. Well, did you know that I sent this document to Blizzard trying to specifically outline what you did well, what you didn't do well, and here's why? By the way, one week later, they changed half of the stuff. No, it wasn't just because of me. I'm not some narcissistic dumbass that thinks that I rule the world, but at least I was trying. I didn't just say abattoir bad. Remember when I made the state of Diablo and people said, oh my God, Rax has five minutes of positives and 25 minutes of negatives. Did you know I wrote it out 
and I sent it to Blizzard. I'm trying to explain what is going wrong. And by the way, just to let you know, a little insider info, Blizzard appreciates these things. They do. Um, and, you know, again, I speak from experience here. When I made that Ballad of the Level Boost video, before even posting it, I shared everything in it with some of the developers, and they were appreciative of it. Ultimately, they ended up releasing it anyway, as history has shown, but I do fully believe that there are Blizzard developers that are, they are, they're really passionate about their games and they do care. And, you know, I would tell them frequently, you know, hey, before posting a video, you know, I, I think this is bad because of this, you know, I, or I think this is wrong, yeah, this could be better. And that's another really frustrating aspect of being labeled as this hate view farmer for daring to criticize the game is that, you know, these people just can't see past their rage of favorite game being criticized and they just, they immediately, immediately, they go towards the character attacks. I'm not on, I don't think at all that I am on bad terms with Blizzard. They have said in the past, it's perfectly fine to state that you are upset with something or is that you're negative. It's just when it's just a vomiting of terror of just saying how much you hate it without any feedback, then that doesn't help them move forward at all. So I think there's a big difference between just bitching about something and making an attempt to try to help. And I just want to give you guys a sneak peek. I am not, in my opinion, I don't think I'm just sitting here crying. I really want the game to be better, and I'm enjoying PoE and Last Epoch while we're patiently waiting to see if the Season 4 PTR is going to save things. So uh, the main two, uh, I'd like to address one more thing. The, there's a bunch of like personal things about people say why they don't like content creators anymore. Kind of looked through them and I saw two things that a lot of people were saying about me personally. One of them says that Rax is way more negative. As I said earlier, you're right. I have been way more negative toward Diablo 4 because I have not liked a lot of things that have happened for, for months. N nothing has worked. Releasing the, releasing the um, event in the middle of Season 3. Season 3, everything about the pet, I think, was a complete disaster. The Avatar of Zir w was a nightmare. I, you're right. I am negative toward it, which is why I tried to move away, waiting for it to improve. And another thing that people say is, I've changed. People will be watching my stream and they'll say, what will happen is someone will pick a fight with Rax or someone will start trolling him and then Rax will talk down on them or whatever. You want to know what I used to do? I used to just ignore it calmly and ban them. Or just, you can ignore it and just let them, let them just fester there but then they just usually just keep repeating what they're saying and then then you ban them because they're like disrupting the stream i mean i think that this is true a lot of times you know people expect streamers because they are public figures to just be punching bags you know how i said earlier that by putting yourself out there you kind of open yourself up to critique it is true but at, on the same token people do take this way too far and they think that it opens you up to being a punching bag. And, you know, I've learned this ever since I started streaming again. Uh, what you see so often are these clips of streamers who, you know, they come off as just complete power tripping dicks. They're banning somebody in chat and, you know, they're really letting them have it. It seems like really overboard. But, you know, what you don't see in these clips are the 20 minutes beforehand of some absolutely torrential douchebag who is just acting as uh, abrasive and as annoying as possible leading up to them getting the smack down um i'd like to think that i'm rather tame all things considered i don't think that there are any clips of me going around acting like a tyrant at least i hope not but if that ever comes to pass i mean hey i don't start shit but i'll finish it and other streamers are way better about this than me. I watch a lot of the Diablo 4 streamers, mods, Woody, uh, you know, everybody who's streaming, Rob, they're way more calm and easygoing than I am just in general by nature. I, I've learned this by working on Maxwell. I, I get much more wound up than most people. But I decided, you know what? When someone starts trolling me, I'm just going to troll them back 
And that actually lowered the amount of negativity in my chat tremendously because then people started learning. If people, if I start to pick a fight with Rax, oh, he'll actually just fight back. And that actually cleaned up chat tremendously. So it's not like I'm, I'm going out there and it's not like I fire up my stream and I look to have a battle. But when people bring the battle to me, I'm happy to engage with it because usually what they say is absolute nonsense. I'm yeah, and you know, again here saying all of that, let's not label everybody who criticizes as a troll. Um, I'm definitely not perfect. I've screwed up many times in the past, and I like to think that I've learned from my mistakes and I've grown from them. But you know, I do value criticism, so I just want to make it clear here to not cross this line where you know you look at everybody with ill intent a lot of the times it really it's really just people who have good intentions and you know that's perfectly fine so it's also important to remember for channels and streamers out there to not get oversensitive talking about the trolls i'm talking about the super negative people i'm not talking about anybody who actually tries to give me constructive criticism i try to listen to it and because I have a lot of things to learn, and I've changed a lot of things, hopefully for the better, and I'll continue to do better as a content creator. Anyway, just to get back on topic, the final thing I want to say, I have never rooted for a video game to fail. I am not rooting for Diablo 4 to fail. I cannot explain to you from a quantitative, qualitative, or personal, or any kind of way, I do not want Diablo 4 to fail. And uh, I don't know, uh, the people who think otherwise, that, that doesn't make me feel good because I, d I, don't know how you, I don't know how you arrived at that. Maybe for the hate views, but my channel is not based upon just farming hate views. L look, at my, look at my channel. How many, hate, how many hate view videos have I ever posted that, wasn't, that didn't have a bunch of feedback that I sent to Blizzard to try to make the game better? I, how many? Was there even a single one? I guess I'll give you one was the, uh, what's it called? The gauntlet. That's your one example. I didn't send them any feedback. I tried it once. It's in the middle of the season and I quit. There's, there, there's one example. You got me on that one. When else have I ever done that? I really don't know. About the closest thing I can ever remember to being very, very upset at a video game and not caring about how its future was, was Diablo Immortal. And of course, that was the game that made them like a billion dollars. And I'm sure we're going to get another one of those in the future because of it. <laughs> I don't think he cares for Diablo Immortal. What do you guys think? No, I, I don't know. I feel like that's okay. I feel like Diablo Immortal, or Immortal rather, is free game at this point. Shoutouts to 800% value, by the way. Anyway. I don't think I've ever made a video like this. I never made a video, you know, addressing a certain negative topic. You're supposed to ignore it. That's the golden rule and just press forward. But uh, I hope this has convinced at least some people who might have been wondering, hey, it, is Rax really just against D4? Has he really went to the dark side? No, I'm, I'm in favor of every single game. And I hope every game it can release as godly and continues to improve. And I will do everything that I can to any gaming company who wants my help to help them. That's it. Thank you. Well, that's it. Uh, like I said, when I watched this video, I, was, I really identified with it, with my time with Classic WoW. And not only that, but social media as a whole. And I guess I felt the urge to make this to kind of bring you guys into my frame of mind with my channel and its direction. It is something that I've kind of struggled with because, you know, I've always been somebody who gives W's where they're deserved and L's where they're deserved. You know, obviously, since the reputation of Blizzard has ebbed and flowed over the years, so too has the tone of the content on this channel, which went from generally positive to generally negative, so much to the point where I quit um, to more recently kind of, you know, a bit of a mixed bag, I would say. Um, I came back when they released something that interested me, which was Hardcore and Season of Discovery, which I've been enjoying, I'm glad to say. And, you know, there's there's been a small contingent of people who have called me a sellout because of it. But 
it's like it's you can never win you know you you make positive videos you're a sellout you make negative videos you're a hate farmer you make both you're a fence sitter i guess what i'm trying to say is that you can put people into these boxes all you want of hate view farmer or sellout if they ever dare say anything negative about your favorite game or anything positive about a game that you hate but in return just understand you're setting yourself to be put up in another box one that's labeled fanboy cultist with about as much quality standards as they have taste which is zero by the way or you know this rabid jilted ex-subscriber who treats a video game like an ex-girlfriend and I, I don't want to be part of either group I want to I want to be somebody who gives W's where they're deserved and L's where they're deserved and I imagine that's what most of you guys want you know saying that though none of this is really fair and speaking broadly here again it's just a side effect of social media's way of polarizing people everything is black and white you're either with the team or against them and anybody who dares exercise restraint and is willing to hear both sides of an argument are labeled as flip-floppers they're labeled as weak fake fence sitters enlightened centrists and i think that's really sad i do i think it's a pretty sad state of affairs when entertaining more than one side of a discussion and not picking a side for the sake of picking a side is shamed i will never bow down to that i will always share what i think of something whether it be good or bad um, and that'll be unhindered by outside influence and i i don't particularly care what people think of it and i encourage you to do the same don't let anybody shame you or pressure you or manipulate you into their way of thinking um, from what i've seen i think unadulterated free thought is at a critical low these days so definitely hold on to that don't let people shame you or gaslight you into believing or not believing in something because there are a lot of people out there who are so insecure of their own opinions that they will literally go to any means necessary to recruit you into their way of thinking whether that be through disingenuity duplicity manipulation whatever but anyways this is starting to drag on all of this aside i just want to put it out there that i do appreciate you guys again 99 percent of you are just here to have a fun time and to watch cool videos the smart thing would probably be to ignore all of this but you know still people say things about you that aren't true enough times it does tend to wear you down just like rack said but you know at the same time I, I don't want this to come off as me thinking that everybody is like this again 99 percent of you are really nice and you're really supportive of me in my endeavors on here and i, I appreciate that i do that is a large part of what motivates me to keep going so yeah thank you um i consider myself to be very lucky to be in the position i'm in uh so yeah please don't take this as me being ungrateful or unhappy i i know that i can get kind of ranty sometimes um these days though i am happy season show and the channel is a great source of happiness it's a wonderful creative outlet for me and you know, I can say this because of my two-year break and everything that happened in 2021 with World of Warcraft. I guess I just, I wanted to share something that's been on my chest for a long time now. Sort of an elephant in the room. Um, and my goal from this point forward is to move forward with cool videos and content that I, ho I hope you guys enjoy watching as much as I enjoy making. I'd like to say thanks to Rax and Trax for the video. I've really been struggling to put into words a lot of these thoughts and I I found his video extremely helpful in that regard so definitely give his channel a watch if you're at all interested in ARPGs because to me he comes across as a, a pretty genuine guy and um, you know he just seems to like games and you know that's always entertaining um, also let me know if you enjoy videos like this this is the first technical react on my channel I know that it's quite different from the norm of what you see on here, but uh, if you like it, I'm definitely open to more of these. Uh, if something interesting comes my way, so yeah, let me know if you'd like that, or maybe link me videos that you feel you want me to react to, you feel it would be a, a good video. But anyways, that's about it. Um, let me know what you think about all of this. 
Like I said, I do value feedback highly and I'll be keeping a close eye on the comments of this video in particular because I do want to get your guys' thoughts on all of this. Regardless of that, like the video if you liked it because I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.